Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 92. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 10, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. Hey, we've been talking about period returns in chapter 10. Now we want to look at a zero bond, <coughs> zero coupon bond. All right, zero coupon bond just means it's a deep discount bond. We paid $300 one year ago and one year ago, we expected re to receive $1,000 re paid to us in 15 years. Well, now it's one year later. And we're looking out in the market and we say, oh, the yield to market is 0 0.085. Well, we have 14 periods left. So how in the world are we going to calculate the return? Well, for a zero coupon bond, they just add the interest to the principal amount on their books. So if we can calculate the present value of future cash flows at uh, right now, time one, given that we had this price from uh, one year ago, if we can calculate the present value of future cash flows, we can get the price at this moment because we have the yield to market. And then we can just look at the difference between price at time 0, price at time 1. So I'm going to actually use the present value formula. I'm going to say, oh, this future amount divided by 1 plus, oh, we have compounding periods two times a year. So I'm going to say the yield to market. Notice this is time 1 right now when we're calculating our price at time 1. There's our yield to market divided by 2, close parentheses, caret 2. Now times, and then we have 14 years left. Boop. We got to put parentheses around there. <laughs> that is much better. Wouldn't that be great if it was a Control C? Oh yeah, right. We got it from here to here. No, Control Y. All right. We could also use the present value function, right? Present value is going to ask for the rate divided by 2. So there's the rate. The NPER is 14 times 2, comma, the PMT. There is none. The future value, it's going to be a positive to us. So remember, the present value function does cash flow. So this will turn out negative. All right, now we can calculate our nominal return using end divided by begin minus 1. And we've used that a lot. This is like the coming up on the 100th video, and we've probably used that formula 30 times already in this class. All right, and then we, as we learned just a couple video ago, formulas when you use cell references suck the formatting from earlier cells. So it's taking from this one right here, it's taking that dollar sign and applying it. So we use Control Shift tilde to go back to general number formatting. All right, so that is the uh, period return or holding return. And remember, we're, we're calculating all these irregardless of whether we sell or buy at any particular time. Because if we're going to look at uh, historical returns, we may only have prices, right? And we need to, to figure out what, for each year, what the total holding period or period return is. So for this particular example, there's the nominal return. All right, see you next video.